In this video, we will modify the same user accounts using Hyena's active task function that were created in our video titled Importing Active Directory Objects number 301. This video will build upon many of the same concepts in the 301 Importing Objects tutorial. When we previously created these 100 user accounts, they were added into an empty OU which we named Active Task as you can see here. For this task, we create a new directory view to show the name, display name, employee ID, division, and department number. We will update the division and department number attributes in this task. We have also set a few values to be kept and replaced as shown here in order to demonstrate how to both retain, clear, and add to existing values. Setting up a task to update objects in Active Directory is very similar to the process we used in the 301 video when we created new directory objects. The primary difference is that when updating directory objects, Hyena will need to determine precisely which object is going to be modified based on some unique attribute which will be identified when setting up the task. There are two different ways of uniquely identifying a directory object. One option is to use the unique Active Directory path to identify the object. In versions of Hyena prior to version 12.5, this was the only option when using the Active Task function to update directory objects. The problem with this approach is that if an external source, such as an HR system, is used to supply the updated data, the unique AD path won't be known. The second option uses a new feature in Hyena version 12.5. Starting with this version, any directory attribute can be used to serve as a lookup or match field. In the example we will use here, we have an input file consisting of the employee ID and several other attributes. We will use the employee ID as our lookup value in this video tutorial. Now let's take a look at the contents of our input file for this task. Since it can be difficult to see the information properly in Notepad, we've opened this file using Excel Viewer in order to better explain each field element and how it will be updated in this task. Our file includes the employee name, followed by the employee ID, the division, and then the department number. The first field, the employee name, is used in the file for control purposes. Since AD does not allow updating the name attribute, this field will be ignored during the import. The next field is the employee ID, which we will use to uniquely identify each AD object to update when setting up this task. The division field is a single value text field. Note that the value for the first account is blank as shown here because we want to keep the existing value for this account and not update it as shown here. If an attribute should not be updated, just leave the new value empty. This will skip updating that attribute. Our next user has an existing division value that we set to clear to show how to remove a value and not set a new value. Since Active Directory does not allow blank or empty values and we use a blank value in the input file to illustrate skipping any update, we use a special symbol string tilde del to represent that a value should be removed or cleared from the directory object. The remaining accounts have various division values which will replace our current values when updating. Our third account has an existing division value as shown here, which will be replaced as will the remaining accounts without any division values at all. Our final field, the department number, is a multi-valued directory attribute. This allows the directory element to have one or more values. 
If you are not updating multi-valued fields, you can ignore this part of this video. Multi-valued fields are modified in the directory by specifying the type of update to perform, such as adding new values, removing existing values, or replacing all values with new ones. Individual values are shown separated by the caret symbol as shown here in our first user. For this update task, we will show how to retain existing values in multi-value directory attributes as well as replacing all existing values. For the first user account, we have two existing values for the apartment number, keep2 and keep, as shown here. In our input file, we are going to add a new department number, new underscore code, to these existing values. So after updating, this account is going to have all three department codes. To show that we want to add a new value, we use a special prefix before our input data of tilde followed by the plus sign, as shown here. If we wanted to remove a value, we would use tilde minus as our prefix. The next user, as before for the division, will have their existing department number cleared so again, we use the tilde DL symbol. The remaining users will have their existing department codes all replaced with new values using the tilde equals prefix symbol, which is used to indicate that we want to set all new values for an attribute and replace any existing values, if any. One final note. Our users are in this input file in the same order as displayed in Hyena Now but this was just to make it easier to represent in this video. These users could have been in any order for this task. Now we can create this task. First, select Tools Active Task. This displays the current list of existing tasks. Select New to create a new task and enter a descriptive name. Also select the type of task to create. In this case, the default is already set to Modify Active Directory Objects. Clicking OK will create the task template and open the properties for the task. First, we'll enter the location for the input file to this task. This is a tab delimited text file. If we view the file in Notepad, we can see that our first line has field headings. So we need to check the ignore first line input file option here. Next, we can configure the field order. Clicking on the insert field button will let us add common directory attributes we'll add the division and employee ID attributes. The department number attribute is not commonly used, so to add it, select the other category, then enter the name. Finally, our file has an extra column in it, the name, which isn't needed. But since it's in the file, we need to define it, yet make sure it isn't updated. We can do this by selecting the Insert User Data button. Once all of our fields are inserted, we need to change the column order to match what is in the file. The last step is to set our matching criteria for this task. Since we are not specifying the full path of the directory objects to update, we need to do two things to identify which directory objects to match our input file data against. First, we need to identify which field in our input file will be used for our match or key. In this case, we are using the employee ID. Select it, then click the Set Key Field button. Finally, 
we will then need to set what we call a scope to determine where to retrieve the users that we want to update. This is needed because an employee ID or other elements cannot be used to retrieve objects in Active Directory. To avoid having to search the directory for each object, we instead define where in the directory to retrieve the pool of users that are going to be updated. This makes the matching process much more efficient. To do this, click the Options button, then click on the Match tab. You can select an existing scope template or to create a new one, click New and enter a descriptive name. Next, add one or more scopes to serve as a search starting point. Since in this example, all of our users are in the active task OU, we can select that OU as our scope. We can also select any top level OU, even the domain root, and search all subfolders. This is useful if the accounts to be updated are spread out across the entire directory. But by limiting the scope to only the OU where objects are known to be located, we both prevent problems if there are duplicate objects matching our key field and we increase performance. Now we are ready to perform the validation on this task. The validation step ensures that as many things as possible are checked for errors before committing the changes to Active Directory. To validate, click the Validate button. Any errors would be clearly shown at this point, which would have to be corrected before the task can be executed. When updating directory elements, make sure that the defined field order matches what is in the input file. Since we did not get any errors, we can now run this task by clicking the Run Task button. Again, if any errors are encountered, they will be shown in this main window. We can now close the task windows and refresh our view. As we wanted, our division has been kept unchanged for our first user, and a new department number was added to the current two that were already present. We also cleared these fields for our second user, and the remaining users have had their department and division numbers updated as specified in our input file. As you can see in this video, Updating directory objects using Hyena's active task is extremely easy and fast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos on using Hyena to manage active directory.